Hello, my name is Thomas, and in this video series, I'm going to go through how I set up Atom for closure development. Before I even begin uh, the Atom setup, what I'd really like to do is go over some of my early experience when I was first learning closure. Uh, I spent a lot of time researching and trying to figure out exactly how the closure developers were working. And what that resulted in was a lot of time being spent just figuring out which text editor to use, you know, I wanted to make sure I could take advantage of all of the tooling that was available in the Clojure ecosystem because I had heard so much about things like REPL driven development workflows and I didn't really understand them. I haven't really seen any of them uh, being practiced live by anyone, but I had this feeling that it started with the text editor. The truth is all the text editors out there support all kinds of tooling that will enable you to do a closure development workflow as you read about in all of the great blogs and all the great talks. So don't really focus too much about that. So you don't need to focus too much about making the wrong choice. And what this means is that likely, if you're watching this video, you're maybe in one of two camps. You are currently a programmer professionally, or maybe you're just a hobbyist and you want to explore closure a little bit. If you're in that camp, my recommendation is choose the text editor that works for you. And likely that's the one that you're currently using. I guarantee you it probably has great support for closure development. Just continue doing that and focus on learning the language. If you have never programmed before or you don't have a text editor that you're particularly pleased with, my recommendation is to choose either Atom or a VS Code. The reason why I choose these is because they are portable, they're easy to configure, there is a huge amount of tooling being built behind them, they're immensely hackable, and the community supporting both of them is just great. So the case of you running into an issue and not being able to resolve it yourself is going to be reduced because of all the community support. Now, if you're still thinking to yourself, oh my god, I heard Emacs and Vim and IntelliJ are the choices. That is true. It's based on recent surveys that were done in the Clojure community that those are the top choices. The reason why I would say don't do those at this time is because tools like Emacs and Vim are going to require that you learn a lot of hotkeys and the configuration is not that straightforward, especially if once again, you're in category two of not really being familiar with programming in general. When it comes to IntelliJ, it's a integrated development environment, which means it's very heavy. And in addition to that, the configuration and how to get things going might not be as straightforward. It's also not as hackable as something like an Atom or a VS Code. So again, this is not knocking those, those editors. They're amazing editors. This is really just about what is the best way to start your journey in learning closure. And I honestly think it's choosing the editor that requires you to think the least about how to work with it. So with that in mind, if you currently don't have an editor of choice, give Adam a try. And here's a little video series that's going to show you all the plugins that I use for closure development on a daily basis. All right, let's get started.